Hey everyone, it's John and here at Solutions 8, and today we're going to be discussing the different custom columns that I use to monitor campaign performance and why. So what you want to do is go into your column setting and then navigate down to the custom columns down here. And inside the custom columns, you're going to see four different custom columns that I put together that help me not only identify any sort of issues with the campaign, but how to set my target CPA, target return ad spend, and then how to uh, look at what is working well and then how to scale that. So I'll give you a reasons as to why I have these custom columns back when I look at the campaign performance so I can share with you, here's what Google sees, what you see, and how you want to adjust your, your goals accordingly. So the first one you're gonna see is average car value time adjusted. So the first thing I look at is the conversion value by conversion time, it's very important you say by conversion time, and then divided by conversions. Again, make sure that you're only tracking conversions that are e-commerce and have actual conversion value to them. The reason why this is important is because if you're tracking all of the other conversions like time on site or add to carts or begin checkouts and you're counting those as conversions, A, don't do that. <laughs> um, you're just essentially telling Google, hey, we want more of these when you really just want more purchases because more purchases equal more add to carts, more begin checkouts, yada, yada, yada. So when you're only tracking the conversions, you can say, what, how much money do we make? And divided by how many sales does it take to make that? So $1,000 in conversion value divided by 10 conversions would equal $100 cost per or $100 conversion value. So that's going to be your average card value. The next thing you want to look at is cost per conversion time-based. The reason is, is we use Target CPA a lot. And Target CPA is going to give you the metric of how much did something cost to make a sale. But... It's gonna be based on the time the click took place, not the time that the conversion took place. So what I wanna know is what is the cost divided by the conversions by conversion time to give me the cost per conversion time-based. I'll share with you why this is important to look at it time-based and how it actually affects your campaigns globally. The next thing I have is profit. So you can actually place in to Google Ads a profit calculator. Um, the profit is your conversion value by conversion time multiplied by your percentile of profit margin in decimal format. So this would be a 62% profit margin. Make sure you place these inside of the uh, parentheses because these will make this will make sure that this uh, calculation happens first and then you subtract the cost from it. So as an example, if I had $1,000 in conversion value and I know that I make $620 off that $1,000 as my net profit, well, if I minus my $100 cost that it took to get there, I have then $562 left, and that's my profit. So that's how that calculation works there. Next thing I look at is return on ad spend time adjusted. Again, I'll share with you why it's important. Target return on ad spend goals are gonna be looking at the click return on ad spend uh, conversion, not the conversion date conversion return on ad spend. So I'll, I'll share with you what I mean by that. But this is the conversion value by conversion time divided by the cost. So this is what my return on ad spend is. How much money did I make and how much money did I have to spend to make that? So here's why these are important. When you look at these custom columns here, you'll notice something really interesting. My cost per conversion, and I'll share with you a really uh, kind of a, uh, a really extreme example. My cost per conversion the last seven days was $75. Well, not really. It was actually $61 because this is my cost per conversion time based. The reason why this shows $75 here is because when you hover over it, you're going to see, oh, it actually takes up to seven days from pressure for most of your customers to convert. You actually could receive 17.5 more conversions. Today, you're actually only seeing 84% of all of your conversion value. So in the last seven days, I really only have 84% of my sales that I normally would make. So my cost per conversion is really high. Well, what if you set a target CPA goal of 70? Google's going to say, uh-oh. I'm only getting, I'm getting 75, I'm not getting 70. Start to reduce the campaign spend. Even though you know it's 61, Google thinks it's 75 right now because it doesn't have all those conversions. So if you set a target uh, CPA of 70 or even 65, which you know is better than what you're actually getting, your campaign is going to start to dip in performance. And it's not gonna start to dip in ROAS. It's not gonna start to dip in return on spend. I'm sorry, our, our cost per acquisition, it's going to get less impressions and less clicks because what Google is trying to correct is, gosh, I can't spend as much money in order to get that cost per conversion because that cost per conversion is high. I need to spend less money. So you're going to start saying like, why? I'm making good ROAS. Why is my campaign doing this? So when you know that by time, your understanding of what you're actually getting because it says, hey, regardless of when the click took place, this is what you made this last week. This is how much it costs you if you compare to what you spend this week. 
So when you know the return on ad spend and the conversion cost per conversion by time, you can adjust your goals accordingly. So let's look at ROAS. Google thinks I made a 386% return on ad spend. In reality, this last week, I made 500. You know, we spent um, 7,400, make 37,000. So I'm actually getting a uh, 504 ROAS adjusted by time, not the 386 adjusted by, by the click because I only have one day of performance in this campaign this last week. The other six days are still pending. So my ROAS is actually look lower. What if you put a 425% return on ad spend goal? Well, I'm only making 386. I need to make 425. Campaign's going to start reducing in both impressions and clicks, and you're going to get less volume. Your profit margin is still going to be the same. You're just going to have a lot less sales. So knowing that I actually have a 504% return on ad spend, it's a 386. I'm comfortable putting a 375% return on ad spend goal if I want to keep the same 500 percent performance. Again, this is what Google sees. This is what Google measures against. This is what's actually happening this week. So that's the reason why you have those columns based on those those type of conversions. Now the profit column, this is just good to know. You know, am I making profit? Um, I, you know, Google says that I spent 7,400, made 37,000, but I get to take home 15,000 of that. Awesome. That's good. 15% profit this, this week in this one campaign. Cool. I'll take that all day long. Great. Um, you may see that you might have like a 225% ROAS. You're like, oh, I think I'm doing good, but you might have lost 10 bucks. So understanding what your return on spend is and how that equates to actual profit is good to know. So cost per conversion, um, the profit, the ROAS are all play a difference. Now the average cart value time adjusted, the reason why this one is, this one is a good uh, metric to understand is you might see a dip in ROAS one week. Like all of a sudden my ROAS dropped by 30%. Uh oh, am I not spending enough? Am my goals wrong? You know, my my did my remarket audience you know fail? Blah 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 blah. And all that really happened was, hey, they just bought less expensive items on your site. Everything looks fine. Just situationally, the products that sold this week compared to last week were just actually less expensive. Or people didn't buy maybe as many of them. Maybe you stopped a sale, and so your average car value is not as high. It's a way to pinpoint a very specific issue that is not really related to Google Ads but just is situational about what something took some, what something happened on your site. Did the people buy product A rather than product B and is product A $50 product B was hundred dollars. And you have more sales on product A than product B don't freak out and start making crazy random changes. It might just had one week of an anomaly that people just bought the different product. So don't freak out and, and think that, uh Oh, things are happening when it just might be the size of the sale isn't as large, which means your return aspen isn't as much. Your cost per acquisition looks the same, but you lost ROAS. So you're like, I made more sales at a better cost per sale. But I lost money. Well, it's because that it still took $10 to make a sale. They just bought a $100 item instead of a $300 item. So it's a very good way to pinpoint an anomaly that is situational based that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with Google Ads. So it's good to know that. Um, yeah, if this was a good video for you guys, please like, comment, share, uh, subscribe to all the fun stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. I'm John Moran with Solutions 8. Thanks.